Uh, hello, everyone. Um, Wang Tong Li. Um, yeah, so let's slowly dive into my topic because I see more and more people start to join in our session. Uh, yeah, so I'm a postdoc in Max Planck Institute for Biochemistry. Uh, today, I would like to present our recent work, which will contribute to work package six in um, the planetary health, uh, sorry, in the Open Earth Monitor project. Um, our topic will be about integrating the co-variability between climate, atmosphere, and social economics, and we somehow call it a planetary health index, um, more like a framework. Let me try if I can, yeah, next slide. So uh, let's start with uh, HILMA activities. Um, as we all know that HILMA activities can um, trigger actually um, accelerated um, uh, climate change and also CO2 uh, increases in the atmosphere. So, so um, we um, do effort on um, man managing the land and we do effort to support industrial development and enhance crop yields. All this um, somehow at some point to some extent come at the uh, expense of uh, environmental um, change or biospheric change and climate change. Um, here I call um, a term which is critical biospheric change. Um, it, is, um, in, it involves a lot of topics actually and uh, very frequently discussed in our uh, workshop. Um, it can be related to the ongoing greening and browning of the land surface vegetation. It can also be dryland expansion and uh, like uh, land um, degradation. Um, fresh water availability also one very important aspect. Um, we we definitely need a uh, live demand uh, about fresh water, but the ecosystem also needs um, blue water, green water to support ecosystem services. Uh, we can clearly see albedo shifts for certain um, large areas, um, sometimes due to Amazon deforestation, reforestation, sometimes, sometimes due to uh, snow melt in the Atlantic. And there are also other uh, critical biospheric changes like biodiversity loss um, and some more points. Um, the, all these critical biospheric changes are uh, highly relevant to and driven by climate change, actually, as well as social economic growth. Um, but there are not only one way controlling, it is always uh, back and forth and interactions in between three domains, atmosphere, biosphere, and social economics. For uh, this, we now have the opportunity to really monitor um, 20 years or even longer years about uh, the critical biospheric change, climate change. And since 2000, we have the great opportunity to um, consider also socioeconomic survey data because they are uh, uh, um, increased uh, dramatically. So from the data perspective, we can actually better um, and more comprehensively understand the state of Earth's system, which is um, partly and with a larger part driven by human activities. Um, so what will be the use case for our project? Um, because we're interested in the co-variability, also the interactions between these um, three domains, we would like to understand a uh, like clear co-variability and can we address somehow um, the common country level trajectories of this three domain by data-driven approaches and framework. Um, here is one um, example using multi-dimensional reduction analysis um, which can be actually nicely integrated into our data-driven uh, topic. Um, Multi-dimensional reduction is a method which is commonly used in climate science. So if you look at uh, the figure that I put on the right side, uh, we can see the North Atlantic uh, oscillation and the whole region, ocean region, um, they are data available for surface pressure and taking um, variability of uh, across space and time for surface pressure, people can basically use 
uh, multi-dimensional reduction methods, um, specifically specifically um, EOF, which is actually not PCA here, but they are more or less similar methods, and uh, derive one simple index which can be representative for the whole region and can um, basically monitor and even tell us the future, short future, the pattern of the temperature and the precipitation. So basically this NAO index can nicely illustrate uh, the pattern of the climate um, for the region um, near the Eastern uh, US and also the Western uh, Europe. Okay, so similar method, uh, but different domain, biosphere this time. Um, this case from uh, Guido Kramer, 2020, their paper basically used uh, PCA method to um, construct uh, uh, three main um, indicators that can represent the whole biospheric change. Um, here, the, the, the figure on the right side, there are two plots, um, both plots uh, use um, the first dimension from PCA, which is vegetation productivity on the x-axis, and uh, y-axis is the second dimension, which is the surface wetness. You can think about um, surface soil moisture instead. So basically, um, the left plot, you can, um, you can see that the spatial temporal trajectory of biospheric uh, uh, critical change. For example, if you compare, um, if you think about spatial differences, you compare Germany, which is the blue color, and uh, Amazon, which is the red color. So you see, um, maybe I, yeah, I'm possible to point. Um, so you see the variability of uh, um, Amazon is quite low compared to the variability of Germany towards x-axis, which is vegetation productivity. So we can easily understand that uh, the high variability is due to the winter and summer um, vegetation seasonality. And if we further uh, look the, the wider uh, span of this yellow, um, which is uh, Siberia um, pixel, and compare it with this blue, we see the yellow one uh, shows more variability um, due to the year since 2000 to 2016, something like this. So there are certain shifts. The shift is happening, um, this figure does not show, but uh, it is happening to, to be related to the surface dryness or the wetness in this certain area. So it's, it's an example of uh, understand uh, this figure. And on the right side, you can see the simplified uh, version of seasonality for these represented uh, pixels. Um, similar method, but in another domain, um, which is social economics. Um, again, Guido Krima, um, another paper, they use a nonlinear method um, to construct uh, social economic indicators, basically five main indicators that can represent the uh, large proportion of the variability from um, more than 100, 500, uh, 1,500 indicators from the World Bank data. So th this study is um, based on was based on a national level um, interannual scale. And what we again see here is that to a bit interpret uh, um, what are the uh, main dimensions after using a multi-dimensional reduction method, um, it is well connected with uh, sustainable development goals. Like the first uh, uh, dimension with uh, uh, green color, it covers almost all of the aspects like uh, zero hunger or gender equality or clean water, all these kind of topics. And the second dimension will be more specific to um, like uh, uh, sustainable, seat, uh, sustainable cities and uh, peace, just peace and strong institutions, all these things. So um, these are uh, basically fall into the same concept, which is to use the the similar analy uh, analysis to try to summarize the world, summarize the earth system or the socioeconomic activities into simple um, index. Um, when it comes to our study, and we are interested in using such kind of framework to discover a bit better um, our use case, which is the co-variability between biosphere, atmosphere, and socioeconomics. And to really um, some, um, synthesize the co-variability and uh, um, 
and basically find out if there are generic uh, trajectories of country level um, change across these three domain. Um, for this, um, actually, we um, are collaborating with uh, our main uh, stakeholder, uh, European Central Bank, and we jointly develop this uh, synthetic tool and uh, indices to address what they concern about. Um, basically financial risks, but also environmental uh, impact and uh, um, in, in the, the driver of um, financial crises and uh, their impact on the environmental condition. Yep, so now I will um, introduce the data and the method that we are using um, one by one. So first, we uh, heavily rely on uh, one data cube developed by Miguel uh, Mahacha 2020. Uh, this data cube uh, includes a lot of uh, variables related to biospheric um, changes, but we consider much more variables. Um, so we need additional variables uh, um, related to our user case. Just to um, shortly mention that we have um, listed variables um, in the table on the right side. So we have GPP, um, evaporation, terrestrial water storage, soil moisture, land surface temperature, and, um, and some other variables that are very relevant to show biospheric change. Um, and we also um, include uh, radiation, precipitation, temperature, uh, humidity drought index um, to represent the atmospheric state and change. Um, the last one will be uh, variables related to social economic um, dynamics. So for this, we uh, simply apply uh, Karimo 2020 um, constructed main dimensions one, two, three, and four, and five to um, um, which is already. Uh, constructed by uh, the, the, the southern of World Bank indicators. Um, yeah, so next I would like to introduce our main method. Um, so here what you'll see is the, uh, the three types of cube. Um, every cube is related to one domain. Um, the, basically every cube contain um, the spatial and temporal information for biosphere, atmosphere, it includes the graded data at uh, a quarter degree, um, eight daily temporal resolution, but then we need to integrate with uh, socioeconomic uh, uh, indicators. And then we need to aggregate uh, all into national level and uh, interannual um, scale. So basically we have temporal spatial information and multiple variables for each domain. And we would like to integrate such kind of information um, to, to sort out the co-variability among different domains, and then somehow um, construct our own planetary health index um, um, with each domain with uh, uh, main dimensions or variables out. So then we can basically present the whole Earth system using our constructed cube. Um, yeah, so I just mentioned that we have aggregated uh, graded data by averaging um, spatial temporal um, final resolution to national level and uh, interannual um, level, and uh, the data covers from 2003 to 2020. Um, and uh, then we um, apply canonical correlation analysis. This is the tool that we use to integrate the co-variability. Because, um, so first we need to define groups. We have clearly three group, biosphere, atmosphere, and social economics. And uh, CCA method first construct um, a pair of uh, variants by maximizing the uh, correlation um, among different uh, domain. So basically I can get the first uh, variable for biosphere, which is highly relevant for the other two domains. Um, same for the variable I would like to construct for atmosphere or for socioeconomics. And CCA also provides uh, additional um, um, variables uh, to, con to be constructed um, using this uh, organal method and then 
um, there will be third pair of variants and fourth and fives depends on the minimum numbers of variables um, in my uh, original cube. Um, so in the end, we actually use linear assumption-based uh, CCA method, and also this method can um, lessen or reduce the uh, overfitting by uh, re regularization. Okay, so um, after CCA analysis, we can um, actually use permutation and uh, some other um, statistical methods to try to illustrate the significance and also robustness of the constructed variants. Um, this I will not tell in very details, but the final step for us is to um, bit, um, sort out what are the generic trajectories of country level um, biosphere, atmosphere, socioeconomic interactions. For this, we uh, can use uh, clustering methods such as k-means to group countries into uh, um, to group countries with similar trajectories. Um, and I will give examples later in the slides. Okay, so um, now it's the result part, but that's very initial results and working progress. Also here, I used two examples um, and the data covers until 2016, which is not yet updated. Um, but you can clearly see that um, there are different patterns compared to um, randomly picked countries, Germany and China, because I'm um, working in Germany now and I was born and long term living in China. So we can um, um, first to understand uh, what I, um, showing here we see x, y, and z axes. Um, this is the biospheric variant, atmospheric variant, socioeconomic variant. Um, we already construct um, the main uh, variable based on CC methods. So then um, the background scatter points are results or are the uh, variation across years um, from different countries in total over 1,008 um, countries there. And then um, the big point is about uh, the changes in, in Germany and here is for China. So we see that uh, the project in Germany is uh, very flattened and there are uh, with blue colors, you can basically find uh, um, the trajectory from the year 2003, and then it turns to red, which is related to the later years. Um, so we say that uh, the uh, variation from biosphere and atmosphere are uh, becoming enlarged and amplified in the later years. And there are quite stable uh, socioeconomic changes. Um, this is different compared to China. That was just a showcase, and here I would like to um, introduce again our method to, to, to differentiate different groups, which help us to um, better say the, the generic trajectories across similar countries. So I uh, put uh, CCA results, um, the first the three components from atmosphere, biosphere, and socioeconomic domain, and then all this variation and information goes go into uh, k-means to uh, get cluster out. Uh, but uh, so here we can say that uh, like um, Northern Europe, uh, Central Europe, Europe, they are in the same cluster, uh, like Africa in the Northern West and in the Central, also in the same cluster. Um, or the broad Asia and uh, the central Russia. So the, I, I need to say that uh, this method is a little bit arbitrary because I need to predefine uh, numbers of clusters. And also if I change a little bit uh, the uh, how many variants that can take into consider, then the clustering will be shifted for some of the clusters. But this is a nice, uh, just a nice method for us to, to illustrate or elaborate the, the gene generic uh, trajectories across um, clusters. So on the right side, you can basically see the, uh, com the different trajectories. In every plot, I show the medium value every year from multiple countries belonging to one cluster, like this red cluster which you can clearly see the northern 
areas um, and also Southern um, America. So this, uh, this is kind of the, the media value uh, from many countries. Then we see a common trajectory here. It's that from, it's from upper right to bottom left. Um, this is driven um, primarily by the trend of uh, socioeconomic growth and also the changes of biospheric and uh, climate. Um, and uh, there are some other trajectories which are clearly different from this simple one, like this one. This is kind of um, related to uh, Australia and Southern South Africa. And this trajectory is a bit uh, interesting shape. Like there, are, there is one equilibrium um, circle in previous years and then another equilibrium circle um, after a jump to another state. So it, it seems like the economic, social economic uh, changes are quite stable, but uh, meet some jump and then comes to another uh, stable state. Yeah, so um, I think you might start to wonder about what's the really physical, uh, biophysical and social meaning of the indices that I construct already. So now I come to the slide, which we can um, say a little bit more, what are the main variables um, to construct uh, the planetary health indices. So on the left side, um, the first plot, it's about the, um, the, the key variables that construct biospheric variant. Um, so you need to, to follow my introduction because I don't have legends here, I'm sorry for that. So uh, the, the lens of the bar indicates the variable importance, the color of um, the bar. If you compare green with green, that means um, this variable in biosphere has a positive correlation with this variable in socioeconomics. And the first big cycle um, circle is um, to explain the first variant, then the second is to explain the second variant and the third one. Okay, so what main information we can we can get from these plots? We see lens of its temperature um, stands out, NDVI, um, safe GPP, these kind of um, lens of temperature vegetation related variables uh, really have strong cor positive correlation with social with first order uh, variation of socioeconomics. And socioeconomic in this index one uh, largely covers many aspects, but mainly about the financial sector. Um, yeah, so we see clear temperature and vegetation um, positive influence on the socioeconomics. And we also see negative influence of NDWI, terrestrial water storage, this kind of surface and land uh, water availability, um, the negative role. And for the atmosphere part, we can also say that uh, temperature positively influence on or related to socioeconomic one and three. And then um, humidity, radiation play kind of negative role. But here, it, this is nothing about causality. It's uh, influence about the relationship. OK, so basically, this is the last slide. Uh, I would like to wrap up our study in progress. Um, first, we can really see the common trajectories, um, which are relevant to the trend, the variability of um, economic and uh, uh, bioclimate uh, bio uh, changes. And secondly, we can um, try to understand what are the main drivers um, that matters for all domains and what are the most relevant to biospheric, atmospheric drivers that control socioeconomic uh, growth. Um, for example, we see lens of temperature, vegetation productivity, these kind of things are, are really essential. Um, last point uh, to summarize this. Um, so this work or this framework, we can hopefully um, open the potential to better monitor or more comprehensively monitor the Earth system with multiple components to really get to the point of um, evaluating or predicting the, the stat, um, systemic uh, risks in, for, for, and also potentially in the future deliver um, more 
solutions for us to, to really address the sustainable um, development goal. And uh, yeah, so definitely there's some more work um, we need to um, investigate about uh, what or why or what are the driver, driving mechanisms of these different trajectories of countries. Um, and we're happy to get your feedback or questions. For this, I would like to thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Wanton. Do we have questions? And okay, someone there. Hey, Wanton. Thanks for the nice presentation. Uh, I was wondering about carbon emission and if you can include this kind of information in your analysis and how that will correlate with your, uh, well, so far what you found. Um, I think that plays a very important role in, in, in shaping the trajectories that we figure out using planetary health index framework. So CO2 emission, this kind of data is not uh, like directly integrated in our current data cube stream, but it is reflected in, for example, um, here, this um, social index four, uh, social index five, which is environmental energy production, that includes basically the like uh, um, CO2 emission poor population, this kind of information. And um, this can be one direct um, data information that uh, um, help to build up our um, planetary health index. But indirectly, I would need to uh, also admit that the CO2 emission, the trend about that can largely already driven the trend of um, many climate change variables and all the trend related things. We can say that uh, it is the, I mean, um, for, for example, the trend to, um, to, to, to shape atmospheric variation and to shape the biospheric uh, variation, certain part of that is contributed by CO2 emission. Any other question? Okay. Yes. Uh, so you mentioned that um, the choice of uh, clusters uh, that you make for the uh, K-means clustering that has um, an important outcome. So I was wondering, uh, did you uh, test with uh, the different numbers of clusters too, or do also maybe even with different uh, clustering methods? Um, um, yeah. To now, I tested different. Uh... Um, numbers of clusters. So I can tell you that uh, this is like, uh, I have nine um, clusters predefined, but before I also test like three and five or something um, that would lead to different uh, um, clustering, um, containing different countries, of course, but the main pattern will be kept. I mean, nine clusters are already a, a, a large number that could, um, how to say, um, it, it, it's, it's hard to explain here, but uh, for your second uh, suggestion about uh, um, maybe testing another uh, method to do the clustering, I think that makes total sense. We will test that. Okay, thanks. Hi, thank you, Tong. Very cool talk. Uh, so just trying to be like speculative here. So I think you stop in 2016 here. So like, for instance, for Germany, how do you expect it will look like, I mean, 2018 climate extremes, 19 similar behavior. I mean, we have more and more like climate extreme happening in Europe. Uh, so, I mean, if you want to speculate, how would you, or could you just like describe this figure for like, you know, the last five years, for instance? Uh, yeah, and it's kind of like three axes. I mean, I think like the picture would look a bit different, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is uh, old example but then this one might be might include some more years until 2020 but uh, i couldn't find 
which cluster German belongs. But I can tell you that, uh, of course, um, your suggestion makes total sense about uh, including recent years, uh, especially we, we have COVID, we have um, the war and ongoing, and all these um, could transform the Earth planet or the Earth system components into a dramatic and unexpected condition. But we need the data and we need a bit more days um, to wait the data out and then we can analyze better the recent uh, changes. Okay, we'll take the last question from, and then we'll go to the next speaker. My question, my question is because, so I see Australia, Southern Africa and Portugal together. So there's actually three countries that share the same climate, um, climate system. Let's say climate, they have the same climate. We share invasive species. So I'm asking is, could it be because you are using atmospheric and climatic, um, atmospheric and the and the VI information uh, as axis, and therefore that is making them be part of the same trajectory. So the socio-economical part kind of doesn't play a relevant role because they are so similar in terms of climates. I cannot um, say it quantitatively because we don't do the test yet, but we also wonder um, how to interpret or does that make sense? Um, so I would think Portugal play or it exists some things. I'm not expert on this, but uh, it, it is kind of um, special compared to other countries in Southern Europe, um, climate-wise or um, socioeconomic-wise. But there are certain uncertainties in the data. For example, this socioeconomic data, which you also mentioned, if we include a bit more variant or less variant, um, if we can trust uh, the 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 later variants, uh, the data, um, the, the constructed variables, uh, it's still a question, right? Because currently we can probably explain the variability of um, these multiple variables um, at certain score, but um, whenever it's variant two or three or four or five, then the confidence getting down. Um, it is. It, it could try to, to, to make the, um, Variability, but actually they are local variability for later variants. And somehow we simplify um, the way to do the k-ming by including all the variants that increase the uncertainty to put noise into the clustering uh, process and uh, put protocol somehow together with uh, the other two countries.